Brace yourself, Miss Money Penny. Going a dry. All right. Uh, July fourth. Lots of libations. Lots of uh, good handmade food and all that sort of good stuff. I, I thought uh, I, I've come down and now looked at this map and, uh, in fact, started recording uh, three times. See that flight? I was waiting for him to land. And you know the temptation is so great to try and get that guy. I got to try and do it right. Oh. See, he's nice and cool. Let's cool down here a little bit. And he's also aggressive too. He wants to uh, land on my hand. Let's put something. Let's put a tempting target out for him. So, focus. I, I've tried to record a video several times, and for various reasons, it's been either interrupted or I have made a botch of it. And really, the essence of what I, as I think about it now, what I've been trying to say is, how do you make decisions uh, for your uh, your gameplay? So, yeah, there was a little, a little delay there again. Um, <clears throat> it boils down to how do you make decisions in a relatively complex environment like this with lots of counters, lots of uh, activities going on all over the place, and lots of challenges with various system mechanics for the game. And... Um, I don't really have a methodology or a system or a means with which to focus on things. Typically, if I play a small tactical game, I like to look at the virtual conditions, look, and depending on how long the game is, look at what each of the units or each of the formations, uh, where they are and what they can do. Can they fire? Can they move? Can they do this? Can they do that? Can, can I use some sort of, uh, I've got something in my mouth, hang on, I'm going to get this fly, dang it, um, and, and you can make choices, and, and there's a discrete number of units, and so you can carry on and go from there, so, but with this, it's obviously a lot more challenging. In this instance, we're still at the 19th of December turn. It's the top of the turn. Soviets have elected to take initiative, and that's one of the very first decisions you have to make. Are you going to take initiative or not? And, in, and for the Soviets, it's a back-to-back -back turn, so it's fairly obvious they should uh, take the turn. Here's all their reinforcements. And I spoke at nauseam, but then deleted the video about how, you know, if we can't do something with all of this nice stuff, and a very large replacement pool where I put three, two armor and a cavalry here. And if we can't do something with that here and break the back of the German advance upon Moscow, then we, we've got challenges as the Soviet in terms of our ability to play the game as the Soviet player. Okay, all that said, when you look at all these forces, when, I, when I'm approaching this and I, I'm making these comments because I'm looking for other means with which to try and carry, carry out this, this exercise and, and, and execute on it effectively. Um, <clears throat> regardless of how we got into the situation, right? So we, we've got this meager line of defenses here. It's fairly obvious to us as the Soviet player that the Germans are attempting to try and penetrate and cut supply. So now we know what their game is, and we can see that in the north, they're also pressing on us up here. They've already cut supply to us up here for those forces, but we've got that covered pretty much with a, a replacement uh, roll that brought us a truck, and that truck uh, will allow us to uh, bring in some extra SP, and uh, I railed in some SP to this uh, little location here. And in fact, I'm going to check and make sure I can do that, but I'm pretty sure I can do that. Um, so I look at all this, and I look at all these forces over here. That was my, my uh, little counterattack that was supposed to draw things away and allow me to create a pincer and pinch here. And the Germans fairly deftly managed to break that up and, 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 and demolish that. 
So now, what do I want to do? As the Soviet player, my ultimate goal is to protect Moscow because regardless of what happens on the rest of the map, we're going to look at this as you know the moral victory of capturing or choking out Moscow in terms of supply. And because uh, that'll, that'll make a nice segue onto the next uh, scenario of whatever it is that we end up playing. Um, so, you know, we have... Uh, how, how do I want to protect Moscow? Well, I want to bring the most forces to bear with the best action ratings possible. Threes, fours, ones are no good. Uh, apply my air against these forces, reduce them, and then take things from there. Hang on one second. So we want to try and we want to try and apply our best forces to to either a attacking these forces such that we make them consume supply, or b cutting their supply line here somewhere here, and uh, preventing them from being fed when it becomes their turn. Now, in this instance, uh, it, it's going to be very difficult for the Soviets to get enough force into this area that they will be able to meaningfully clog up any sort of uh, supply line. So that really leaves us with the second choice, which is bringing uh, forces to bear and making, you know, optimal or suboptimal attacks against these units and then forcing the German player to choose, do I use my ammo force, ammo, my, you know, internal stocks, or do I uh, try and leverage uh, supply? Now, they can't leverage supply, uh, blah, supply uh, for this hex anyway, but they can for these. Uh, they can throw, just make the seven uh, to throw. So that's one option. The other option is, uh, and that's one thing we could do. And the, one of the other things we could do is, you know, bring, continue to bring these forces back, collapse them into massive 10 step stacks here, and just make it, you know, physically, phys or really around here, make it physically impossible for the Germans uh, to isolate every rail line, which would be, you can see from here. There are one, two, going from right to left, one, two, three, four rail lines, uh, of which uh, one is cut, and this one here. So uh, that's a huge order for them to uh, try and attempt. So uh, that's why I've deepened uh, the defenses here. These, are, these stacks are all uh, fairly strong. And, and I think the bulk of my reinforcements are actually going to go not against these forces, but reinforcing this area here, because this is one of the key places where the, you know, if the Germans want to press, that's where they're going to have to press. I, I, you know, as the Soviet player, I don't know why the, the Nazis went this way. I actually do know, uh, now that I think about it. They, they were trying to cut supply for these chaps, and that's forced the Soviets to press some trucks down here, create an extender uh, so they can throw uh, uh, and count back, here's the extender here, so they can count back and cover all those forces that were all last turn and were all over here. They've now pushed back and collapsed on here. So for the German player, what that's done is freed up a lot of these forces. I don't need as much force now as the German player to contain uh, this effort here. I could probably break down two divisions uh, maybe three, and envelop these guys with just little four three fours, or four uh, four four threes, and uh, and surround these guys, and then move the bulk of these rest of these guys up through here into into uh, uh, Kolomna and and further further north, and uh, press on Moscow. So th there's this to and fro that goes on with this game that's really very interesting, and and sometimes you know I'll come down here to to, in, in parentheses, play. And really what I'm going to do is sit down here for half an hour and, and look at both sides, because sometimes I'll be sitting here looking as the Soviet, and I'll see an opportunity for the German player, then I'll you know, I flick the switch and look at it from the German perspective and go, okay, well, wow, that's interesting. I could do that. Very cool. Uh, same goes for, uh, for the Germans. So I'm looking at the German turn. I'll see things the Soviets could or should do and, and kind of take things from there. So makes the game incredibly interesting 
and it's, it does extend the number of minutes or hours or quarter hours or half hours that you uh, invest in the game, but it's such fun. It's really interesting to sit here and ponder what are the various options. I, I don't think you can cover all the choices and, and uh, permutations of choice that are available, and clearly, you know, when you read the AARs and the battle reports, you're going to look at this and go, you know, Kevin, why didn't you do this? Or why didn't you do that? Or, that, my God, that was a really, uh, you know, stupid move. But if you look at this in the context of the bigger picture and all of the things that we're trying to deal with, I think that starts to then kind of marry itself nicely to the challenges that the higher level commanders have in terms of the bandwidth they have to make informed decisions uh, and, and engage with their subordinates about a particular division or particular regiment's activities. What, what, what are they doing? Why are they doing it? Where are they going? Why are they going there? What are they trying to achieve? Do they have the forces to do that? What are they looking? Who are they competing against or fighting against? And all that sort of good stuff. So really, it boils it all down and it makes it very fascinating. Uh, and you always make mistakes. I think, uh, I think if you try and play this like you're trying to play ASL or lock and load or a tactical game, you'll blow your brain up and, and you have to kind of let things go a little bit. So anyway, another long diatribe that probably doesn't add a lot of value or mean very much, but nevertheless, uh, it was just a thought that I had after way too many margaritas and a very relaxing hour and a half on a friend's boat watching fireworks. So happy July 4th to everyone. And I'll probably pop this up right now actually. It'll be out of sync in terms of uh, gameplay to date, but uh, just to refresh, we're on December 19th, at the beginning of December 19th turn, and it's the Soviets activation, and they are ready to rock. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but we're ready to rock. Later.